Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is for trading on Tuesday, May the 31st, 2016. First and foremost, I uh, hope everyone had a wonderful uh, holiday weekend and are ready to get back to business here. Uh, first thing to note is that here it is the last day of the month. It's also the last trading day of the month. And we're still here. America is still here. You're looking at a chart of the US dollar index and the index is still here. Rumors surfaced around the internet that the US would not survive the end of May and that the US dollar index would be defunct by the end of May. Specifically we were said that it would be the 28th of May. Well, the collapse did not happen, and there's another example of fear porn. As you can see, the US dollar index is in the overbought status and is attempting to lock in an uptrend movement here. It is now well within the Kumo cloud of death. For those of you who are uninitiated to the terminology that I use in these videos, such as Kumo Cloud, is referring to the Ikumuko um, method of charting. And so, this here is the Kumo Cloud. Uh, you probably want to do some research on, on Ichi, that's what I call it uh, for, for short. You can Google it. Um, basically, some Japanese business dude invented it some several decades ago. and. Uh, most charting software packages have it. Uh, I like to use it on the charts because it helps to um, to paint the picture of the position uh, of a market. I do not use it as a trading vehicle. I use it as an analysis ve uh, vehicle, especially for the videos. Any aspects of the itchy system, I I will say I I kind of uh, have my own way of using it. It's not popular. It's, for the most part, unknown. I, I go against the grain a lot in the things that I do. So I do not use traditional indicators the way people use them and things of that nature. I use my algorithms. And Anyway, leave it at that. So that's what that is. Kumo Cloud is this. Uh, when prices are said to be in this cloud, they're consolidated. All right. I call it the Kumo cloud of death because sometimes trends can reverse here, move sideways, and have erratic movements, and thus chopping a person up. All right. So that's why I call it that. Anyway, moving on, we have weekly support now at uh, 92.27, and the market is pulse waving positive. Pulse waving means that it is trending upward or trending downward, so hence the word positive and negative uh, attached to the word pulse wave. So the market is pulse waving, it's moving up, and it looks like this market is going to power up and try to make a run for that 98 level. Uh, conversely, the euro is down uh, overall against the dollar, but due to manipulation, uh, the euro is green right now, and so is the US dollar index, which is technically not supposed to happen but it's happening so there you have it uh, I project this this is gonna go this is gonna they're gonna try to make a run short and trade and weak but still uh, I would not um, I, I don't see a, a pullback coming anytime soon as the Fed needs to keep this thing propped up especially going into June with a possible rate rate hike on the horizon taking a look now at crude oil as crude oil is starting to pull back here uh, bumped its head at that 50 and it's having a lot of problems breaking through that 50 momentum's coming off we're coming off that overbought but that doesn't mean anything because we could easily uh, reverse and lock back and, and break above that 50 um, so I will throw out go out on a limb and say um, another attempt above that 50 and the bulls are going to pile on and bring this to 60 <clears throat> excuse me we're supported weekly at uh, 39.62 right now uh, on this move, so it doesn't appear to be over with yet. We still got, <coughs> excuse me, behind the scenes uh, support right now. We're looking at 
uh, even though we have weekly support at 39.62, we do have trend line support at 47.26, and that's this blue line right here. And then the long-term trend line, it, the orange line, is at 44.98, and then the short-term, this pink line right here, is at 42.35. So the market uh, appears to be well supported right now. All right, looking now here at intraday at the S&P 500, which is coming off. Looks like prices want to head back toward this blue line support of 2070 before trying to make another attempt at that 21. And this market is well supported at 2035 uh, on the weekly right now. Uh, definitely want to watch uh, 2085. Uh, we don't want to see prices get below 2085. If we do close below 2085 today, that is going to, to uh, set the stage for lower prices getting back down to that 2070. And we could even test it and come a little bit further down. But I think we're going to be well supported above 2035 here uh, going forward in the S&P. All right, taking a look now at gold as you can see uh, we did put in a low of uh, 1202 the thing that should be noted here in the gold is that gold is respecting the 1200 support uh, because as you can see here we have not closed below it which is great we are closing uh, above that here on the weekly so it is respecting the long-term trend line support here which is coming in at 1192.40 so we're well supported at 1200 and we have upside resistance uh, at 1302.70. So I see the market going to try and make a run back up toward the blue line here, which is 1241.30. So 1241.30 is where we're probably headed right now. And currently we're at 1220.20 right now. And last but not least, silver. Uh, silver hit a low of 1590 before bouncing back. We're now at 1600 market is trying to respect that 1600 and we should close uh, there or about market is oversold and is trying to uh, trying to lock in we'll see because we do have some strong support at the orange trend line the long-term trend line of 1577 uh, several weeks of down right now one two three four this is the, this will be the fifth week if we close negative uh, that's usually the, that's usually uh, a sign that the market's ready to turn. We have upside resistance of 1798 going forward in the silver for this week. So even though it's a shortened trading week, I do see uh, some signs of, of life here. So we'll have to see what develops. Uh, a plethora of news and things coming out. We had a few news pieces this morning. I forget which ones they were. I think the case Shiller was one of them or something. Um, but as you can see, it's really not making a big deal. Uh, but the only thing that's really moving right now, which is really interesting, is the Dow being off 133 points. But it's really not doing anything too much. And I'll show you that real quick. It's kind of looking, um, you know, like the other charts I showed you, like the S&P. It's closer to its um, support of 17 684 intraday. We hit a low so far of 17710 today, which is the new low for this week. But we are well supported at 17407 in the Dow, which is right at the purple trend line. And then below that is the long term trend line support of 17222. So we'll have to see what happens here. Um, but I do think this market is going to try to make uh, another run toward 18 thousand and try to close there so uh, I would look to be a buyer of these um, these pullbacks and as you can see momentum's coming off here but because the holiday week and because we're well supported up in here I don't see too, um, too many pullbacks so I think this is probably going to be the extent of it but we'll watch and see and it should be noted too that uh, the Russell's only off 20 ticks and um, the Nasdaq's only off nine dollar, not yeah, nine nine and a half points. S and P down ten, nothing to write home about. And of course, your Nikkei is positive by a hundred and five points. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So take what you can, give nothing back.